Welcome to my summary of new flow features for um, Salesforce Spring 26 release. My name is Daryl Moon. You'll find me at Certified CRM where I run courses for administrators, um, sales cloud consultants, etc. And big emphasis there on flow as well. Okay, so my top features in flow include uh, three new flow pipes. One of them has disappeared already. Okay, so this is something that happens from time to time. A new feature is released in the preview orgs and doesn't make it all the way to production. Okay, so there's a couple of things here that haven't quite made it, but I'll show you what they were going to look like and we'll get a bit of a clue as to what's coming possibly in the next release. We've got some exciting new screen flow styling I can show you. Um, the next two being able to collapse components and scroll around the page much easily, more easily is all about navigation and particularly when you're dealing with large um, screen flows or, or large complex flows. There's a new message component, um, a really neat looking Kanban board component. Uh, there was a, another file upload component but it's disappeared already. There's a new feature to preview files, some improvements in debugging. Uh, there was some sorting and inline editing on data table, but that's disappeared, been pulled already. But there are um, triggers now on files, so content document, content document version. You can trigger actions from those. And there are also some improvements to logging and um, showing where flows are used as well. So let's jump into the demo okay so firstly the new flow uh, screen types so when we go into new flow we've got some new screen options here one is a cadence step flow so a cadence step is like a sales part of a sales process where there's a number of steps that you need to go through okay so there is a screen flow that's specifically for that and there was also a multi-page one as well which has disappeared um, that was for mainly for experienced cloud sites so maybe it's not quite cooked yet so it's disappeared as well we can go back because we've also got a new triggered flow as well and there's a cadence triggered flow okay so again when a sales cadence or something like that um, certain thing occurs then you can trigger off that as well okay next one is around the styling so I'll have a look at a flow that I've already got this one here okay and it contains some styling so now you can see that in the screen you can apply some colors um, you also need to have a good um, sense of style as well to make sure that the colors that you apply actually look good so those style options appear over here on the right and they depend upon what you've chosen so if you've chosen the overall element in here then you've got option here for the background color you've got a border color you can see there's a little border around there you've got border color choices and radius as well that you can set and we'll see that in action in a minute um, you can also set text colors and you can also configure so down here in the buttons you can configure the background color for the button you can configure the text color that goes in the middle and you can also configure the border color and the border weight and radius etc as well okay so you can you can change all of those things and there's also the option is when you hover over the button 
you can specify the appearance when the pointer is over top of the button so you can change the background color or the text color and you've also got one on active as well so when the user actually clicks that button that you can change the styling there as well okay so styling lots of choices there um, you can see here if we change that to say five you can see that the button radius there has changed okay so if we put that back to 15 it's got a more rounded like slds version 2 sort of style to it but i haven't changed the one for the previous button that's available uh, down here further okay and then the pause button as well okay so they've all got options where you can configure them okay so that's our styling um you can make a horrible mess there if you're not careful with your styling. Next feature to have a look at Okay, we'll just close that. So the next feature is being able to collapse components. You can see here that this decision element has got a little chevron icon there and I can collapse that or a greater than sign perhaps. I can collapse that or expand it and show the details of what's contained within there. So you've got big complicated loopy loops or decisions, then you can collapse that around to make it easier to view. Scrolling, um, simply scrolling with the mouse wheel side to side, up and down, much easier. And of course you can go control and zoom in zoom out as well okay so that's two things both the collapse and the scrolling that just make navigating around large flows so much easier you don't have to go over here and grab the slider bars top and bottom you can just click on your mouse and then move your flow around to exactly where you want it so that's rather nice flow message is the next one so within these collapse decisions here I've used different variations on the flow message component and I'll show you what that looks like. So here is a, there is a new component uh, down here under display called message. And when you display that, you've got, um, well, that's the whole section. There's the actual message itself. Um, you've got a type, so it can be success, info, success, warning or critical and you can display the text that is con excuse me contained within there as well and you can also apply some style to it although in this one it's only giving us width and alignment but because i've already placed it in a section there then that width is not really being applied because it's contained within this three of twelve column okay so there's the first one so i've set that one to success the next one I've set to info, so that gets that grey styling, comes with it. The next one is set to a warning, so it's in orange, so that's message type warning. And then the last one is message type error, and that's uh, critical. And that comes up in red, and then I've styled the rest of this to match and use the red text in there as well. And you can see I've also done some styling on these buttons. And we'll see what that looks like in just a minute. Um, okay, the next part of this is the Kanban board. So down here we'll get some re opportunity records so that we can display them in a Kanban board. And the configuration for this, so Kanban, is down here in the components and then this configuration of it uh, you've got a label and you've got a data source so where are the records that are being displayed in here coming from or well, they're coming from that get opportunities the get records and then you can configure the columns and you can configure the card components so which fields are displayed in there so we've got amount close date last activity next step in there Okay, so that's the Kanban. Now, the next one I was going to show is the Lightning 
web resource for file upload, but that's now been uh, pulled out. Um, I'll show an image of what that's going to look like. Let me just drag that across. And okay, that's not going to display. All right, well, I won't show that, but there is a new lightning um, web resource there for that, but it's been pulled out at the moment, so must be something there that's not quite ready yet. Okay, the next one is preview files. So I just do a get records here to grab an image, and then there's a file preview component. Uh, it's called preview files. Uh, where does that live? I forget where I saw that now. Might be called file pre yeah, it's called file preview. Okay, so that's the component. And you give it a content document ID and it will display that file and we'll see what that looks like in just a minute. Uh, and that was the end of it. Notice that we've also got a couple of fault messages here and I'll explain later the reason for those. So if we now run that, you'll see what it looks like. So firstly, we get a horrible yellow background and we've got a choice here so we're going to just go through these ones so and you notice our button is yellow here now except when we hover over it changes color and we've now got a success message we can go back that was in green yeah, information this one's in a gray sort of a color and we can go back and so we can just go through and look at what those actually display like you can see that positioning is moving across because that's the way i've placed them on the page and then the last one was the error okay so that's those message components the next part was the kanban board so you can see it's quite similar to a kanban view that you might have configured on leads or on opportunities but you can do your own customization here um, you do have links to the record there, but you can't do anything like you can't grab them and drag them and change stages and things like that. It's more of a display capability at the moment. Maybe that'll change in the future. And now next buttons have appeared right down the bottom of the page here. Okay, so the LWR file upload, unfortunately that's missing at the moment. I had to take that out because it had disappeared in between when I built the flow and uh, created this video. The next one is the file preview. Okay, so this is just an image file and you can see there's now a tool there to do a file preview. And that's the end of that flow and it takes us back to there. Um, okay, another one, another feature I want to show you is an improvement in the debug feature in that if you've input some variables into your flow in when you're debugging um, and then you want to go back and run the flow again I'll just correct that so if you debug that with those values when you come back again the values are still there so you can run that it displayed those values and you can finish we go back into editing our flow maybe make some changes now come back and debug and those values are still there they're not lost you don't have to change them all over again which is really helpful especially if you've got a lot of features in your flow that you want to um, you know make changes for the for the debugging okay I've just lost my spot uh, here we go. Okay, preview files, debug. Okay, the next one, the data table. So the data table had two new features, but unfortunately they've been removed as well, and that was sorting and also inline editing. So they've been removed, but hopefully they'll come back. Here's a quick screenshot of what the data table component was going to look like. As you can see that there was a sort column values option and edit column values option. Um, but unfortunately those have been removed and hopefully we'll make it in the next release. 
Next one I want to show is not that one. We'll do a new flow. And I just want to show the triggers on flows on documents. So if we create a new flow. Okay, we're in the application here, but we can create a new flow from there now. Okay, so now we can do a triggered automation, record triggered flow. And we've now got the choice of being able to use content document and also content version. So this is really helpful. If you want to create an automation, perhaps you're waiting on um, a customer to upload a file to a case or maybe to an application through some sort of portal, and you're waiting for a file to be uploaded so that then you can go and do the next part of that automation. Maybe it's an application process or something. So you can now trigger a flow based on content document. So a new record has been created related to you know one of your um, maybe to your application object and you can now trigger off and maybe create a new task or send an email to the record owner or something but you can you can trigger something off there so you can do that for content document so if they've uploaded a new document or you can also do it on content version so if they've uploaded a new version of a document and of course content document and content version is talking about files within Salesforce. Okay, so files attached to a record, not the old um, attachments, but the, the newer version, the files. And then finally, um, there's two new features that look promising, but they're not quite there yet. So the last two is one is flow logging. And for this, you need Data 360 or the old Data Cloud. Okay, so you need that implemented, uh, configured and installed in your org to be able to do logging of your flow. And what that lets you do is not just troubleshoot failures and stuff, but you can also see the performance of your flows, how frequently they run and any errors and, and give you an idea on how to improve them. Okay, but you need Data 360 and I haven't got Data 360 in a developer edition pre-release org that I can show, unfortunately. And then the last one is usage, flow usage. So my understanding of this one is that it is supposed to show where a flow is being used. So I mentioned before that there was a fault display screen flow in that previous flow and it was used twice in there and it was also used in a couple of other flows that I've got here as well. So what's supposed to happen is I'm supposed to be able to come here to the automation app, pick my flow and go, okay, if I'm going to remove this flow, what's the impact? So where is it used? So what's the usage? And unfortunately it doesn't seem to work. So it's not showing any automations here. I've got permission to see all of the automations because I'm the administrator and I've got all the boxes ticked to be able to view flows and edit flows and everything, but it's not showing me here um, that this flow is used in a number of other flows. So yeah, I'm hoping that by the time this hits production that this will work and that would be a nice feature. Okay, so there's lots of exciting new things in there. There's a couple of things that have been pulled out the last minute because they're not quite cooked, but hopefully they'll be ready in the, in, the, in the release after this one, so the next one after spring. So I hope you enjoy. Um, check the dates on these. They're January, February release dates um, later into February for, for most instances. But of course, you can go to... Uh, status.salesforce.com and have a look for your org to see when your release dates are. So enjoy your Spring 26 flow features. Thank you.